Hi everyone, Paul Ice Sam. Welcome to the Inbox Review. So today we're going to be reviewing the 148th Must Have A26 Invader. Now it's a French company. Uh, they released this kit about four years ago. I was interested in the back end. I uh, never got one. They took it out of production, I think, and it suddenly reappeared on the market again. So made the most of it. Bought one while I could. They are £59.99 a Hannant. Um, I've not seen them anywhere else for sale just yet. As far as I'm aware, the only other 826 in 48 scale is the old Revel Monogram one, uh, and that's got raised panel lines and it's an older kit, so probably not the best. Uh, this is a multimedia kit, it's got resin, photo etch, uh, plastic. It's supposed to have turn barrels in it. Uh, it's advertised as having them on the Hannon site in the description and the pictures, and sadly it doesn't come with them. Uh, it comes with resin ones, which don't look the best either. Uh, so, a bit disappointing, and I think I'll be contacting Hannon because. To buy the Master Barrel separately is going to cost £15. That's a quarter of the price of the kit. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there with that one. Um, like I say, it's an awesome aircraft, the A26. Heavily armed. It's like eight eight cans in the nose, three in the wing, two uh, turrets on it as well. And as well, it carries ordnance. Absolutely phenomenal thing. And I believe, my buddy Lonnie keeps saying, it was the fastest piston-powered bomber, I believe, of the Second World War, I think. I might be wrong. I've got on second-hand information there. Uh, but it's a beautiful looking aircraft, it really is, and I'm hoping this kit is going to be good. I've had a quick look through the box, um, and it looks okay. <laughs> That's what we're going to say for now. We'll look at the review, and then we'll come back and see what we think at the end. So, let's head over to the bench, have a look, and see what we've got. Okay, there we go, there's the box art. Uh, actually, quite nice box art, very simple. Um, it's got the E26 oh, on a firing run by the look of it. Uh, dust car behind, bit of an explosion, not sure what's going on to be honest, um, but it looks good, interesting little bit of box art. Like I said, they're a French company, so a lot of French uh, writing on this thing. Um, on the side we have a detailed scale model for other collectors, made in France, obviously the address where they're made. On the other side we have just information about the kit. A uh, high quality model kit including multimedia parts to build a hyper detailed and authentic model. Accurate, accurate historical markings and highly detailed instructions included. Paint and glue not included. Also we've got a little view of the resin uh, gun bay in its open position. And a photo etch included in the kit. Now I can't see a kit number on this. Oh yeah there we go. It's MH148003. So there you go. Like I say, not bad. Box is okay. A little bit flimsy in places, but at least it's top opening, which is always a good point. So, when you open up inside, you are met with several bags of all sorts of stuff. Um, right, so we've got the PE. We've got loads and loads of resin. Uh, not the best bags, to be honest. The bag's a bit flimsy. There's a lot of PE in together. They could probably do with being packed separately. Uh, we've got gun barrels. Now this is one disappointment to the kit. Uh, the original reviews and the reviews of the place where I got this, Hannant, show this as having master barrels. And it comes with resin, which isn't great. Uh, they're not fantastic, so I will be writing an email a complaint to Hannant about that, because I'm not too impressed. They're still showing as having the metal barrels, and I would appreciate it getting them with the kit. I can get them as aftermarket from Master, but it's going to cost me £15. Uh, which isn't really fair when it actually shows them as part of the kit. So a little bit of a disappointment, we've got the actual bag of sprues all together in one bag, the instructions and the decals in the bottom. So there we are. So we'll pop those to one side over there and get to those as and when we can. And I think we'll start off with the plastic part as usual. So they are in a sealed bag. Yeah, completely sealed. I need a knife. There we go. Let's see what we got. Like I said, it's the first time I've opened this. I got it the other day. It's an interesting looking kit. So, sprues we've got one, two, three plastic sprues, one clear, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, first impressions are uh, the sprue runners are absolutely huge, massive. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're rather monstrous. So, let's have a little look. So we've got the main fuselage halves uh, and the nacelles for the engines. Now, when I, now when I first looked at these online, uh, the shots actually showed the panel lines, etc. to be a little bit soft, but looking at them in real life, they don't actually look all that bad. Um, 
the moulding's not bad at all. I've seen a lot worse. It's not too bad. There may... There is a little bit of residue on the plastic. Whether it's physical mould release, I don't know, I doubt it. I guess you never know. Um, but overall, the detail's not too bad. If I come in close, you can have a look. Uh, you see the panel lines here? They're a bit big in places. They're almost trench-like in some areas. And then in other areas, they're okay. But they're nowhere near as soft as they first appeared when I looked at online pictures of the kit. I've seen a lot worse before. Um, obviously, it's a company that hasn't released a lot of kits. There's the other side, identical to the bottom piece. And then we've got the nacelles. Engine covers there as well. So overall, it's not too bad. These runners are massive, though. Absolutely huge. Yeah, they're rather large. Now, oh, we've got some interior detail. As you can see there, now that is quite soft. It's very soft, in fact, very soft detail. But at least it's there. So it does give some interior detail. That's not too bad, I suppose. I'd rather have it soft than nothing. Um, we do have some interior detail on the engine ourselves as well. Now, there's no actual physical um, flash as such, really. I can't see any issues. Uh, the ejector pins look to be pretty much out of the way. Uh, we're not going to cause any issues. But that detail is soft inside. And the exterior panel lines are <laughs> quite a bit too big, to be fair. But, as said, the only other kit in 48 that I know of is the old Revel monogram. And that's got raised panel lines. So I'll take these trench-like ones over raised, raised ones any day. Um, but overall, not too bad. It's a good length. Uh, the actual length of the fuselage about the nose is about 29 centimetres. So... Probably about five, so about 35, 34 centimetres in total length. It's going to be quite a big bird. Um, and that doesn't look too bad. So, yeah, first sprue, not too bad at all. Um, let's try the wings next. So, we've got upper and lower surfaces. I've got the back because this is where I picked it up first. We've got some nice locating points. We've got obviously, I'm assuming, uh, draw points for um, something or other. Don't know actually, we'll have a look at the instructions for that. Again, the runner on the sprue is huge, absolutely massive. Flip it over, panel lines, right, plenty on there, that's for sure. Again, a little bit bigger than I would have liked, as you can see there, but there is plenty of detail, and the pictures I saw, the detail looked a lot softer, so not too bad. Like I say, I'll take larger panel lines over raised panel lines any day. Now we do have recessed and raised details, that's quite nice. There are raised rivet details there as well, so a little bit of care when you're sanding and what have you. Uh, again, no issues, can't see any issues there at all. A little bit of a short run mould on the number there, it's not an issue really. Thankfully it's not on any of the actual plastic parts. But they are big and the actual locating points to the plastic are huge as well. Um, but that's by the by, I can deal with those, not much of an issue. And overall, the mould looks quite good quality, actually. Uh, like I said, they don't make a lot of kits. I think they do this. I'm sure there's some sort of tank uh, transporter I've seen, and um, maybe the other thing, but the detail's not bad. We'll come close and have a look. I'll just run through the panel lines for you. It's not bad at all. That's the underside, obviously. And then we've got the upper wing surface there, a mixture of raised and recessed detail. There's plenty there. I think that's the bottom. I can't remember which is the top and bottom. Might be the bottom actually, that piece. All the access points. Not bad at all. Like there's no issues with the mold. The mold is really nice, crisp. It's clean. Just some of those power lines are a little bit bigger than I would have liked, but. Not a problem. There's that one. And the last plastic sprue. So not a lot of plastic. Not going to be a massively complex build. Um, some nice pieces on here, actually. Props look good. Yeah, so on here we've got a, you know, it's a wing spar of some sort. We've got the engine, actual... Um, so we've got panels to go over the engine. Yeah, we must have. So we've got the actual nacelles of the engine. The interior engine detail there. Got, it must be the... Um, 
horizontal stabilizers, the props, props are really nice. Engine covers aren't bad, a bit strangely done. Okay, obviously slide molded. I think. Maybe not. Talking rubbish, ignore me. Uh, we've got the elevators themselves, they don't look bad. The landing gear, that's really nicely done actually. Some nice little detail in there. There's a hint of flash here and there, but I'm not really particularly bothered by that. But overall, doesn't look bad. Again, oh, EPM. Why? Yeah, we've got an ejector pin mark. Right there, two of them. Right on the other side of the elevators. So they're going to need some attention. Bit of a shame. Damn. And there too. Yeah, some rather nasty EPMs there. They're going to need some work. That's rather disappointing. So let's have a look at the rest of the uh, plastic. Make sure we've got no others in stupidly prominent places. No, we haven't. So, okay, well, I guess they need an EPM somewhere. Um, but I would rather have those moulded in halves and stick them together like usual. But it's not the end of the world. They're not that hard to deal with. I usually use my uh, punch and die set, punch out a little bit of uh, plastic, plastic, glue it in place when it's dry, sand it flush. You need very to little thinner than uh, filler than at all, but it is disappointing to have them in really prominent places. But hey, I guess that's just that. Props look good. Not bad at all. And the engines don't look bad at all. They're a little bit soft again in places, but we're probably not going to see half of that anyway. But overall, not bad. We're coming close now. A little looky round says landing gear. They're not bad. There's those, uh, I'll show you the ejector pins in a second actually. There's the elevators. There's the horizontal stabilizer. The props. Props aren't bad. Not too bad at all. And the engines and covers themselves as well. And some sort of spa there. So if we flip it over, I'll show you those EPMs. So there's the EPMs on the back of. The elevator, so you got one there, one there, one there, one there, so there's four on each one. And then on the actual stabiliser itself, a couple of huge ones each side. But again, they're not that difficult to deal with, but it would have been nice to not have to deal with them full stop. Like I said, I'd rather have these parts moulded in halves and glue them on. It's probably the same amount of work, really. Um, but that's not too bad, not too bad at all. So overall, the, the moulding doesn't look too bad. Uh, this is what's probably going to make or break this. What are the clear parts like? Hmm, no, not good. Right, so we've got loads of clear parts. Um, we've got a couple of options for the front canopy. Oh, we've got EPMs in the canopy. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. There are the underside. Okay. Hopefully they're going to be in places where they're painted. I don't know. So look at the instructions, but there are EPMs on the ca on the canopy glass in a couple of places. We've got a different couple of canopies there as well. Uh, I'm going to come in close to the close-up camera, spin it around. Uh, we've got a couple of different canopies, different opening sections. So obviously you can. I'm assuming have one or two of the canopies opening. Now, if they are physically different ones, that one, that one there is going to be less issue than that one because if that's open clear plastic there, there's an EPM right there on this, they're in the centre bit where it should be painted. I'm not sure yet, I'm going to speculate and I'll look at the instructions in a bit. The glass, it's not the greatest. There's a fair bit of distortion. Optical clarity is not great at all. And I knew this would be the part that would even make or break this kit. But, as long as those EPMs is a really, really nasty piece of distortion on one piece, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you it. Right there. If you look at that whole panel at the top, right at the front section is about a centimetre wide huge distortion there it is you can see it just where the light catches it's absolutely massive and right in your face so hopefully this kind of be can be used because although there's a little bit of distortion on there's no 
real issues there and then we've got the actual parts for these which is that one there which has got a bit of a scratch on it but it's not really a bother and then it's going to be probably that one and again no no bother at all so hopefully we can get away with not using that one because that has got a massive flaw there it is there you see it catching it's right there it's a massive flaw on the canopy and that i'm assuming is going to be an open piece of glass so hopefully we can use that one we will see in a bit overall the clear part's a little bit disappointing i'm not going to lie um i would have expected better but it's one of those things that i don't think must have a short run company but they've not got a lot of kits under their belt so yeah it's going to be one of those things where you're just going to have to yeah deal with some issues here and there now the gun barrels i'm going to show you these they are crap and I'm, i am disappointed about this bit uh, and I will be lodging a complaint. These are 50 cal barrels, so therefore, these are for the uh, turrets. I'm going to bring them off so you can see. So the moulding resin, they're not great. With a little bit of clean up, they probably look pretty presentable. But they are really not good at all. Uh, the master barrels look absolutely superb. So there's one set, there's two set. They're not that, I think once you clean them up, they won't be that bad. There's quite a bit of detail on them. But they're never going to look as good as metal. And like I say, the original kit shows it coming with them. And the pictures on Hannon show them coming with it. Um, and they're not included, which is a bit disappointing because it's going to cost me £15 to buy them from Hannon's again. When they should be included with the kit in the first place. So a little bit naughty that. Not too impressed. So we've got that. We've got the barrels for the back. They're the back, sorry, the nose, which are here. The 850 cars, which are in the nose. Absolutely immense piece of firepower. And again, yeah, they're just horrible. I'd rather use brass rod than nose. They're just crap. Yeah, they are. They are utter shite. I don't swear on my videos, but they are. That's rather disappointing in the kit. So, you need to replace those with a bit of brass barrel, uh, piping, tubing. Or go for the um, master ones. And the thing is, the end of these is actually curved, so I will go for the master myself. But I shouldn't be having to pay fifteen pounds extra on a kit that already costs sixty pounds, uh, showing parts that should be included with the kit. So that's disappointing. The actual uh, turret ones don't look too bad. I think they clean up okay. Those ones are not nice at all. So that is really disappointing. Bit of a shame. Uh, like I say, well, that's well. I'll fire an email off to Hannon's, but I won't hold my breath. Um, but you never know, you never know. Now, if you're taking these resin parts out, get yourself some extra bags. These are the bags our sanders come in. And I'm going to store all the resin safely in there, because frankly, these bags are terrible. So, let's start at the very front. Quite a bit of resin to get through, so I'm not going to dilly-dally on it all. Uh, we're going to pick some of the important bits. And I'll give you a tip when you're working with resin. Whatever you take out of the bag, keep a hold of because you never know when little tiny parts are going to be little tiny parts that have fell off or come off and you need <sighs> right so we've got two nose cones let's have a look at the quality of the the resin mm, it's not great we've got road wheels they're actually quite nice got the flats already in the uh, what looks to be a rear road <laughs> with the tread completely missing off the bottom wow awesome it's just absolutely fantastic yeah let's not bother putting any tread at the bottom everyone knows we have ball ties right so first off we have one of the uh, nose cones so this is the open one the open version it's not the best resin in the world there's a few flaws in it it's going to need a little bit of filler here and there just a wipe over and a quick sand so it's nothing drastic uh this is showing the gun bay itself so it's the front section that goes on here and you've got the two uh access points there and you've got the 850 cars in there with their magazine feeds as well and they look quite nice should you choose to show it it's a nice little bit of interest to show for me not sure which i would show Open or closed, hmm, tough one. I'd probably go closed myself, which is this one. So it's a good chunk of resin. Um, is this better than the other one? Yeah, we've got a few holes in here and there, a few air holes. A little bit of floor here and there, it's gonna need 
uh, just taking off. But overall, it's not too bad. Obviously, you've got the nose there for the A50 cows. Anyway, um, but anyway, the resin, it, it's not too bad. It's not the best. Uh, the wheels, these ones, they're molded in the grey, grey, green stuff. Again, you can see where the tread kind of vanishes at the bottom. You're not really going to see it as much, but they vary in tyre depth. Yeah, they're not too bad. The wheels themselves are quite nice. Um, actually, you're going to have to get something in there. Oh, maybe not then. You're not going to get anything in there. You might have to get a little rooter bit in there to clear that out. Again, not the greatest. I know there are other wheels out there. And again, see that one's alright. <laughs> that one's not. Right, okay. Um, so that one's okay. That one's all fully clear. That one's not. So again, not great at all. Uh, the rear wheel. Let me just check the tread pattern on that one. Yeah, it's a little bit better on that one. The rear landing gear wheel. Uh, not too bad. Tread's quite nice, nicely depicted. Completely vanishes at the bottom though. So not great at all. Again, he's a little bit clean up inside. Drill bit in there. Or a pin or something to clean it up. Not too bad. A bit disappointed about that wheel. That's a real shame. And again, maybe another point of contention for uh, Hannon to have a look at. We shall see. We'll pop all this back in another bag. Right, so... I'm going to pick some of the bigger parts of this. I'm not going to go through every single bit. So this is engine detail. So we should have two of basically everything in there. Oh, I've got four or some. Yeah. We've got one of the gun turrets, which has got more holes in it than an arrow. You see all the air bubbles? Again, not the greatest. It's easily dealt with. It's, it's not an absolute nightmare to do. It just needs a little bit of filler. It's certainly not the best quality. Is that one just as bad? Yep. Yeah. Upper and lower uh, gun turrets. Not great. We've got the actual gun itself, the 50 cals. We've got two of those. Ooh, just one. Must be a slightly different one elsewhere. That's not too bad. The detail is not bad. Not bad at all. We've got these parts here. I don't even know what it is. We're going to pretend to know what it is. Again, not a bad cast. Not perfect. Engines. Bit rough. Gonna need some clean up. But should make something that looks like an engine at the end. The other one's the same. Yep, we've got these parts. Two of those in there. No idea what they are. Some other bits and bobs. Again, the the, the moulding's not bad. Oh, we're missing one of those. You in the bag? Or have you gone missing completely? Oh, okay, so we're missing one of those. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So again, they're not bad, it just needs cleaning up in places. Certainly not the best, I'll give it that. A bit disappointing in areas. But yeah, we're missing uh, one part of resin there, so we're sure it's not on the bench. And we're sure it's not in the kit anywhere else, which it's not. Air bubbles, not the best moulding etc etc uh, I think it's going to be the thing with this kit this kit's going to be a little bit of a compromise to build the kit you want to do the, you know they can be fixed they can be rectified um, they shouldn't really have to be to be honest but hmm, it, it's whether you're prepared to make that extra work to whether you view this kit as being worth the money now we have We got horizontal stabilizers. We have a gear bay doors. Looks like it. Uh, sorry, bomb bay doors. Let's have a look what we got. Okay, dog. So, unsure what we actually got there. It looks like the rear horizontal stabilizer. We got two of those. Okay. Is that rudder? Yeah, that must be the rudder. Okay, so that must be the rudder. I think. <laughs> I have no idea what they are. 
at all. Anyway, the molding's not fantastic. Again, it's going to be the same story with this kit all around. It's there. It looks to have the textured detail on the front. I think me and Lonnie were discussing this the other day. There could be um, uh, the anti-ice devices on them. Whether it is or not, I don't know. But again, detail is not fantastic. Same there. A bit of clean-up. Yeah, definitely going to require some clean-up. The detail is there. It's just very soft and a bit bland. So, yeah, not bad. Uh, taking it we got, uh, ooh, pfft, I've no idea, elevators, not elevators, we've got flaps, ailerons, not sure, two of those as well, again, details there, not fantastic, there's too many parts here, I'm not going to sit here all day figuring out what they are, um, again, it's probably some of the best moulding I've seen, uh, pouring of the resin, that's not bad, not too bad at all. Supposed to have a hole right through that. No idea. Got a hole right through that resin there. Then once you clean it up, it's not going to be too bad. It just looks a little bit rough in places. So yeah, not bad. Uh, nice bit of detail inside these. Not bad at all. It is going to take a lot of clean up. This isn't going to be an easy build. You, uh, you're going to require quite a bit of time and effort. And again, if you see any little bits like that, pick them up. Pop them in the bags. You never know it's a bit that's snapped off. You can glue it in place. Because that's the beauty about resin. If resin snaps half the time, you can put it back on, see a glue it, and you never even see the joint because it just snaps so nice and clean. Um, that doesn't cause an issue. So far, the resin is a bit disappointing. Uh, I can't wait to get the instructions to figure out what the hell we've actually got. And whether I've actually got it all, because to me, I'm definitely missing one part so far of the engine. Um, it's not on the bench, nope. It's not on the bags, nope. The last bit. So this looks to be cockpit. We've got a lot of parts in here. So we've got cockpit floor, looks like another part of the, the gunner's turret, some curve bits. Very, very thin piece of resin for bulkheads. So on and so forth. There's a lot in here, it really is. So, small bits are flashy as hell. Gonna need quite a bit of cleanup. It's there, though. It is there. Uh, we've got something. No idea what it is, but there's something there. We've got another part there. They gear doors. I can't, you know what? I cannot tell what these parts are. Looking at them, I have absolutely no idea. That's a copper floor, and again, the detail is not bad. It picks a nice bit of surface texture on the floor. Um, Show some of the uh, control surfaces. Blah blah blah. Uh, we've got the bulkhead there. Again, looks a bit warped to me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's there. It's it, it, it's there. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, we've got another section there as well. Again, it looks absolutely warped to hell to me. Doesn't look straight at all. So yeah, I think this might give special be a run for the money these kits. We've got a thingy. It's like a pull hole. We've got some stuff. Whether these things are supposed to be curved to hell, I don't know. But if not, they are warped to absolute hell. <laughs> uh, we've got another one. And another one. Oh, we've got broken, two broken pieces in there. Not nice. And we've got another thing. And another thing. They're not bad, actually, depicting the wire detail. Too bad at all. We've got a watch -a jig. That's not bad, that little bulkhead. It's quite nice detail on that. That one actually looks pretty straight as well. We've got some stuff. More stuff. Even more stuff. And more stuff there. We've got another section there. My god, if these are all going to fit inside that fuselage, these are going to be fun. 
Yep, yeah, they're going to be a lot of fun. We got a thing. Ah, they're the uh, engine covers, aren't they? Which we have two of. It's a good start. So they're the engine covers for the resin engine. That's not too bad. That must be the nose. So we do have two different nose cones. I'm going to be interested to see how that works. Uh, I don't know a lot about the aircraft. We've got, yeah, there's, there's, there's have a bomb bay. I knew it had a bomb bay. Three bombs, which are absolutely terrible. They are warped to hell. As you can see when I roll it. So they're not great either. <laughs> um, we got some bits. Seats by the look of it. Another thing. Uh, stuff. A watch my jig. Uh, that. Uh, another one of them. And the covers. So, yeah, overall, um, the resin looks a bit crap, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. Um, hopefully... Clean up okay, and a lot of this wall piece at the back is going to get cut off, and there must be thin somewhere for that. Is it in amongst the resin? I have absolutely no idea at all. So that's the resin. I'm gonna to have to go through the resin, pick out what's broken, um, and I will be letting hands know. If this was a 20 or quick kit, I wouldn't have a problem at all. Um, it's one of those things that you know what you're paying for. You buy a special hobby kit or, or another short run type kit. You know you're going to get a bit of work. You know stuff's going to need fettling. I enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, but when this thing costs 60 odd quid, it doesn't come with the barrels it should for a start. Um, I could put it with slight warpage here and there because you can get that with resin anyway. Bear with me, I'll put all this back in the bag. But with missing parts, broken parts, because there are several broken parts, um, front of that is broken there. As you can see on the end, the other one is as well. I've already put back in the bag. So that's not great, it's fixable, um, but it shouldn't have to be fixed. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of pieces there. I have absolutely no idea what they are, but that's pretty common for me anyway. So all back in. I'm gonna grab all these little bits, they can all go in there as well. There you go. Right, so there's all the resin. The resin is disappointing, I'm not gonna lie at all. That is pretty shitty resin. Not very often, I swear, in a review, but that is rather disappointing and a bit crap. PE. Let's have a look at the PE. Let's see what horrors we got in store for this. Right, well, the PE part be a little bit damaged where it's left loose in the bag. Focus. -da. There we go. Not actually that bad. So we've got the fins for the bombs. Excellent. That's a good start. We've got belts. Good. Instrument panel cowling. Excellent. We've got control levers. Not bad. Little windy wipers for the windscreen. The Olios for the landing gear. So the P is good, actually. I'll be fair. The P is quite nice. There's plenty of it on there. The frets nicely, oh, nicely made. It's quite thick, but not too thick. A little bit of damage where it's loose in the box. Um, but overall, that's actually rather nice photo etch. So hey, something good at last. There we go. Now we've got decals. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to pop this back in there. Let's have a look at the decals. Now again, something that can make or break a kit. And... Okay, to be fair, they don't look bad. They're not really thick. They're a nice satin finish. Got some interesting schemes. We've got one called Brown Nose. I like it. And Stinky. Oh, we've got a theme. Uh, the round doors are all nicely coloured, they're nice and registered. Tail flashes, again, really nice. The main markings are good, kill markings. Everything's in register really, really well. Uh, we've got um, instruments down the bottom, dials, etc. They're not too bad either. The actual main instrument panel, which is really nice. So, yeah, decals are good as well. Stars are good. Everything's in register. Everything's legible. They're not thick. There's no maker's mark on it. it just says, uh, yeah, 2013 and some French. I'm not going to try and read that. Decals are quite good, actually. As long as they lay down well, they shouldn't give you any issues at all. Uh, I think there's... Ooh, how many markings was there? Can't remember now. Let's have a look quickly. Oh, we've got a marking sheet as well. I didn't see that. Let's have a look. So we've got one, two, three. We've got three... Marking, so we've got a natural metal finish. 
of Stinky. It's quite a nice one with the yellow tail flash. I like that one. We've got another one at the bottom. Mm, not bad. It's a 51 Denang. You've got 45 France and 51 Korea. That's the one for me. Olive Drab. Got my name all over it. Brown nose on it at the front. Okay, so we do have. There must be an early and a late nose. I see that now. I see how that works. Okay, no. I can see the difference now. So, yeah, that actually doesn't look. Yeah, nice to get this. Always nice to get this extra bit of uh, call out for the colour. Um, with a kit like this, with that resin, I wouldn't be going natural metal. It's going to show every single imperfection on the kit. It really is. Um, yeah. I just realised where I got my landing gear mixed up front and rear. Don't know why. What an idiot. Uh, but anyway, uh, on the other side of this, the de actually, decals look really good. I'll give them that. Uh, the P, P looks good. Plastic moulding doesn't look bad either. The resin's a bit disappointing. Speaking of resin, this is the actual layout for the resin, which I'm going to sit and go through later and check everything off. Make sure we've got it all. See what is what and what is actually damaged. So that's a nice layout actually to show you all the resin. It just shows you just how much there actually is. And there's multiple parts of some of these as well. So there is quite a lot in there. Yep. Not bad. So yeah, another good little uh, addition. Now the instructions. Let's have a little look at these. Get the white balance back. There we go. Hope you guys can see they're okay. So we've got a picture of the aircraft at the top. The kit number. Uh, Douglas A26B Invader. We've got indications, you've got number of pieces and resin parts, part number for opposite sides, it's in a bracket, mm, not the easiest thing to see, but it is there. Decals, another N, oh my god. Uh, another N for photo etch, really? Uh, paint and subset. So you've got four ends to try and figure out what they all are. Nice one. Why don't you just put, you know, decals D, photo etch PE. That might have helped, but anyway. Colours, there are guns, um, Mr. Hobby Acuous. Uh, Tamiya and Humbrol. Whether they're enamel or acrylic, I'm not sure, but <laughs> they can go jog on. Um, you've got flat white, flat black, interior green, red aluminium, gun metal, olive green, yellow, clear red, clear green, leather, khaki, grey and gold. So, all nicely laid out there. And then we start on the actual build itself. So, start with seats, belts, uh, instrument panels, etc, etc. So yeah, the instructions don't look bad actually. A bit confusing with those ends. It's going to be something you're really going to have to keep an eye on. And there's a cheeky part I've just seen there. We'll get to that in a sec. Building up the floor of the cockpit. The detail of the cockpit. Onto the bombs. Or onto the bomb. And this is where they've been cheeky. Can you see that? That is a piece of sticker over where it's showing you how to assemble the metal barrels. So a little bit cheeky. Not impressed by that. Same at the top there as well. Stuck over. Uh, we've got the actual gun assembly of the turrets. Okay, he gives you a little suggestion of adding your own wiring on there. It's quite nice, quite like that. We've got the bomb bays themselves. The turrets, all these bulkheads, they're going to be fun to get in. If they're as warped as they look, they might not be. Um, they're going to be fun to get in. On to the rear. Let's have a look. So we've got the stabilizers, the rudders, the elevators, engine building. So yeah, you get to build these up. We know for a fact we're missing one of these. Uh, so we've got you to use one. One what? So we use one. Use one only for detailed engine of your choice. Ah, sorry. Gotcha. Is that photo ten? Is it the round circle? Yeah. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. It's not an in, idiot. Right, so we're going on circles. Oh my god, that's even worse. So a black circle is PE. Right, okay, I stand corrected. So, at taking it, you use that to detail at one of the engines you want to have showing. That must be how that works. <sighs> I think. Okay, right, another part is from a power. We've got the props, the engine covers, the cowlings themselves. Onto the actual nacelles of the engine, the landing gears in there. There's those really war parts we had before. 
with the broken bits off. Now they are actually inside, so it's not the end of the world. And then obviously these are the gear bay doors on the outside molded, uh, cast in with it as well. Um, we've got the landing gear wheels, the legs themselves. Position of the wing mounted guns. Okay, I didn't know this like wing mounted cannons. My god, that's some firepower. Uh, in fact, me and Norman, I think me, Norman, Lonnie was talking about this the other night. Okay, so we've got different variants for different ones. Some have it in the wings, some don't. I honestly don't know. Yes, we do. Okay, so Stinky, the early one, has nothing in the wings. Brown the 1951 Korea, has the offset, like that. And then the C1, which is the 51 in Da Nang, uh, has some staggered, like say, P47. Okay, so we've got eight nose cannons, six wing, is that right? They're just in one wing? Oh my god, some immense firepower. Yeah, just in one wing. Okay. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot of firepower. Onto the wing assemblies themselves with the uh, ailerons and flaps. Yeah, they are the flaps, so they can be positioned down as well. I'm sorry, I shot. Sorry, guys. Uh, flaps are the ailerons. Attaching the wing to the fuselage. And that, they're going to be a nightmare. I could just see those being a nightmare. And then we're on to canopies. Ah, oh, which one? Which is the canopy I need? Right, okay, let's have a look in a minute. So, onto the, the uh, actual turrets themselves, you've got that glass piece at the back. Not too bad. Then we're onto the different noses. And again, turn the length of tube and you need for the nose, etc. etc. Um, that's the nose I've got on my one, so it'll be that one. And then what on to clear parts. Right. By the looks of it, I'm trying to figure this out now. Give me a second, guys. Let's have a look. So, brown nose use this canopy and this nose only for two and three. Okay, so the early one has a different nose. So that's the nose I'll be using. Happy with that. That's the one I like the look of. Canopy. Which canopy is it? Please be the one I want to do. Where's the numbers for the canopies? 819. Hello? Right, okay. So it's that one. Oh, yes, get in. It's the one I wanted. Woohoo! Yeah, boy. There we go. That'll do me. Happy with that one. Now, if you are using another one, Which is that one. You're going to be safe though. Jetta pin marks are covered anyway. So either way of the canopies, you're going to be okay. That's not really an issue. Uh, they put the ejector pin mark at a place that's going to be painted. So that's not much of an issue. But I got the canopy I wanted. So I'm happy with that. That'll uh, ding dong do for me. So what have we got here? We've got the cannons. Obviously the um, engine. Uh, sorry, the doors to get to the uh, weapons themselves. We've got the window wipers, PE, they're going to be interesting to do. We've got the latches and the stops for the actual uh, hatches themselves. And then you want to, so they've got two different, 21 is for two and three, and this one's for the earlier versions. It's got different nose, different canopy. Yeah, and that's it. So just pay attention, you'll be fine. And uh, that is it. We're right through to the back of the instructions. Okay, there we go. So, uh, does it get a thumbs up or a thumbs down? It gets a, uh, yeah, it's in the middle. Uh, must have kits, more like, meh, nah, have kits. I don't know, on the fence about this one, it's not a cheap kit. Um, £60 isn't cheap at all. The plastic doesn't look bad, the plastic looks better than I thought. The decals look good, instructions are good, uh, photo edge looks great. The resin's very disappointing in places. Um, and it's really disappointing not getting those 10 barrels which are advertised uh, for sale uh, with the kit of Hannans, both in pictures and writing. So, yeah, I'm going to contact Hannans to see what they're going to say about that because um, it's not fair to show it and not give it you. 
Overall, is the kit worth the money? No, not at all. Uh, it's not a £60 kit. Even with all that resin, that resin was properly cast, maybe, yes. Um, but I don't think it's worth £60. It's probably more around £40 mark, that kit. Uh, even if it did have the turn barrels in there. What it's going to build up like, I don't know. Uh, will I build it? Yes. Uh, I don't mind a challenge. That's certainly going to be a challenge. I don't think the plastic's going to give many issues. And a lot of the resin should fit in. Um, but there's certain places like the nose that's going to be interesting. Uh, and the rear end, the stabilizers, elevators, etc. They're going to be interesting. But I think it's buildable. But I don't think it's worth the money at all. Uh, just quickly as well. Those pieces I thought were warped. They're actually the inside of the landing bays with the landing gear doors attached. I had a look through. I went through every single piece of resin to look for damage. Um, they're actually yeah, inner walls. There's two bit of damage on two of those. Uh, the wheels, as you can see, are completely different. One's got a massive bulge in it, the other one hasn't. So that needs rectifying as well. True details do do a set, but again, it's five pound. I shouldn't have to pay that when they included with the kit. Uh, and where I thought was one of the engine uh, piston was I can't remember what it was now. Uh, it was missing. Uh, it actually isn't. There's 18 required, and it should give you 19. So I was wrong there. But there are a couple of damaged parts uh, that need rectifying. The wheels certainly are shocking. Uh, obviously, with the, the tyre flash, as you can see in the picture, is way off on one. And then the centre inserts aren't properly uh, cut out on one as well. So that needs rectifying. And the two little broken bits on the interior uh, wheelbase. Other than that, yeah, I think the kit's going to build up okay. Um, it's an interesting subject. It's a beautiful plane. Heavily armed. Massively armed thing. Uh, it's certainly ruined your day in a hurry. Um, but it's definitely not worth the money. And that's a real shame. It really is. Uh, I think if they cast the resin better, they'd be onto a winner. But I'll give it a go. It's going to stay in my stash as long as I can sort the, that barrel issue out. Um, and maybe we'll see it built up at some point. So there we go. If you're interested in one, Hannah's have got them. There's not many left in stock. And I've got a feeling once they're gone, they're going to be gone again. Um, like I said, it's not cheap. But if you want an A26, it's either that or the old Rebel monogram issue. Uh, so you take your choice and you see what you can make of it. Uh, I built worse kits. I can tell by looking at it, I built worse kits. Um, but like I say, it's definitely not worth that money. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's not. It's not worth 60 quid. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Check out the forum and the Facebook page, International Scale Modeler. Head on over to umpretail.com as well. Have a look at the products we sell. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're watching now, you're already subbed. Uh, give us a thumb, thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment. I read every single comment. Everyone pops up. I get an instant notification of it. Uh, say hello. Let me know what you think of the kit. Yeah, whether it's meh, have, or must have. Don't know. And uh, obviously, check out the live shows every Friday, half 7 UK, half 8 Europe, one thirty Central US. And whether town that isn't Oz, I need to figure that out. Uh, I've had a few complaints from the guys about that. Uh, for our live show, we have what we've all been building, buying latest kit releases, what we've been working on, giveaways, chat with you guys, guests as well. Uh, head on over and have a look. There you go. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.